All right, howdy folks. So today we're going to take some of these free VDB assets that were made available just this week by Jenga FX. They're the Embergen VDB files. They look awesome. And we're going to bring them into Omniverse today and we're going to make something like this. So we have the tornado and then we have the um, the ring of smoke, the shockwave is what that's called. All right, but today we're just going to do the uh, the tornado, but they, you do them all the same way. Okay, and so the first thing I want to do here is um, just I'm finding my directory that I'm saving to. It's just easier. Uh, and then I'm going to right click in my stage, create a cube. I'm going to dock my properties over here because I just feel more comfortable with a big long list of them. Uh, so on the cube here under extra properties, you want prim vars is volume. Yes, it is. Uh, now let's go to our render settings. Under common, you want to turn on flow, and then all the ones that are path traced is what you want to select. Uh, this tutorial will only work in path trace mode. It's not going to work in real time mode yet. Yet. All right. So that's good. That's done. Now we're going to right click, create materials, and then create a volume density material. And we're going to just drag that on top of the cube and boop, it disappears. That is normal. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is we want to load a single um, VDB, which I conveniently have bookmarked here, and Tornado, and I'm just going to grab one of these. I should say that uh, after I downloaded those VDB files, I just dropped them into my Nucleus server here. So let's just select that. So I. They're on my Nucleus server. They can live on your local disk. Just when you go to that browse, um, just browse to where they are and, and everything will be cool. All right. So that, that good. And uh, let's go ahead and switch to path trace mode so we can see it. And in any moment now. Oh, ha. One thing I forgot here was under path tracing, Non-uniform volume. Yeah, you're definitely going to need that. All right, so that's the third thing. That's why that didn't work. All right, so now I can see that I need to rotate it on the negative 90 and then bring it up here. And I'm just moving the cube, but the cube has auto-adjusted itself to be the volume um, of the VDB file, so that's cool. All right, so now we want to save this as, uh, let's call it, VDB Tornado 2. Very creative. All right, here it is right here. Great. So um, now what you want to do is you want to enable a couple of extensions. So go to Window Extensions. You want to type USDA and USDA Editor. Make sure that's on. And then you also want uh, the Script Editor. Make sure that's on. And you know it will be on because it'll say Window Script Editor. And let's just open that up right now. All right, now you don't have to do any of this code or anything, but um, what you want to do is you want to put in here the path of the directory. That's the, dire the path to the VDB files. So after this, the VDB, the VDBs start. You want to give it the name of the VDB. So just don't worry about these. Just replace your text there uh, with the name of each VDB file, because it's going to be VDB, VDB file under bar number, all right? And then specify your output directory. So those are the three things you need to do. Directory to the VDBs, the VDB name, and then the output directory here, all right? So we're just going to run that. Well, let's make sure the directory is empty here. Yes, and let's run it. And there it is. If I open it up, I can see it has all my VDBs in here, which is exactly what I want. All right. So we'll minimize that. Don't need you anymore. And now let's right click on our USDA file and select edit. And that's gonna open up here in my, um, my text file. And this is just what a uh, USD file looks like under the hood, really. And I'm going to come down here to the Asset Imports Volume Density Texture. 
And there's the one that we dropped in uh, over there on the stage. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to give you this. So don't you don't you sweat it. All right. So I'm just going to select this one line of code here, and I'm going to put it right here. Paste it, and then end curly brace. Very important. And then I'm just going to grab all those files that I had uh, over here in output. And I'm going to control A, control C, and come over to Tornado 2. Do that. And then let's just adjust these there. OK, so I'm going to save that. And you can see down here in Machinima, it compiled the whole thing. And it's like, all right, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. And if you scrub, you got to hold on a frame. It's going to render out that frame. Uh, you really can't do real time scrubbing. Uh, I mean, you can't scrub real time. You just have to wait for the frame to load. But once all the frames load, it seems like it uh, seems like it's better. And so there's that frame. Okay, so I'm going to shorten this down to be a hundred. 27 frames because that's how many VDBs I have. And I think it is at, I do believe these are 24 frames a second. Okay. All right. So cool. And let's just redraw the sequencer there. Okay. So now as we wait for this frame to load, um, basically, you know, that's it. You've done it. Congratulations. But if we come here, I'll, I'll wait for it to load here. All right. So I just turned those on so I can see what's going on here. And I'm going to up my resolution here to 1080p. All right, so now let's uh, let's give this guy an environment. Um, well, I can do this a couple ways. So first I can come over to the Environments tab, uh, which is delivered with Omniverse. Everyone should have it. And um, we have a bunch of skies available for you to browse through and use. Um, and you can simply double-click on one of those and bring it into your stage. Um, I didn't do that, so I'll show you what I did is I just went to this uh, this handy dandy website here. Oh, yep, that's where you get the um, the VDBs. But I went to this one, which is Polyhaven, and they have just a ton of 8K free. Everybody probably knows that. I knew that, but then I forgot it, but then I remembered it again. And so that's, that's what I used anyway. And I wanna up those so I can see which one I want. Okay, cool, it's a good enough place to start anyway. So um, I'm going to come up to my stage light, create a dome light, select the dome light and drag my desired HDR file into the texture file slot. And then it's going to compile here for a second. Cool. All right. So that's looking more like a dust storm than it is a tornado. It's a little bit better. I do like um, I do like having like this rock in the foreground, just kind of give it some distance. Uh, but let's uh, this is looking a little sparse. Let's thicken it up a little bit. So I'm going to come over to my density material we just created, density scale. I'm going to change that to like ten, and then uh, this default light comes in every stage. It's always on. I always forget to turn it off. So there we go. And uh, that's, yeah, not great. Ooh, 25, now that's looking pretty good. So I can set it just about there. I mean, you can keep going. It starts to get a little crazy. Although that is getting better. Okay. And uh, generally, what we do here is put a map plane down. But um, right now, that's not working great. So I'm not doing that. I'm just kind of playing with the camera. So it's not so obvious. Uh, from here, I can create a camera from view, adjust that, maybe something like that. You know, I can take the dome light here, and you know, I can move this all around. So maybe this looks better up here or something. I don't know. Kind of uh, looks kind of cool. Um, and then if it's too big, not big enough, you can always scale it. So I can scale this like 
make it big. And again, you're just scaling the cube. You're not, I guess I don't need to do that. I just need to fly the camera around. Okay. And then maybe I'll just select the camera and give it a, give it one of these so we can really look up at it, to it. If we move it farther away, it gets bigger. Okay. Uh, another thing you can do, uh, if I select the volume density material, if you want to uh, play with the color, um, I chose white just because it seemed to really grab the the detail of the smoke really well. But you can feel free to change that to like a, you know, something brown, something kind of more matching, maybe a little more orangey that matches the landscape. All right. So from there, super easy. You can come over to your sequencer. There's a little movie maker button right there. You can come down to window rendering movie capture. And I just dock that down there generally. And then you uh, just set your settings for, for how long you want it to go. I'm sure you've all done the render game. Or if you haven't, there's lots of tutorials out there, but definitely want that to be path traced. You want to make sure it's using your camera. You want to do your frame range, 0 to 127. 24 frames per second is good. Uh, now, depending on what kind of GPU setup you have, I have nearly the dream setup there. But um, if you do have multiple GPUs, ah, even if you don't, and you're just going to leave it render, I would change that to like three. And that is the uh, samples per pixel per frame. So how many GPUs basically get to share that frame in chunking it out? Uh, or if you can also do it um, with a single GPU too, just play with that number. Don't make it too high. And then the path trace. This is the uh, oh, this is the refinement period, and I set I set my renders to be 64 frames. Um, oh, sorry, 64 samples. Yep. And then specify your you know where you want it to go. And this is really important here. There's a bunch of different outputs you can do. I choose um, MP4 generally. And that will collect all the frames for you and then compile an MP4 at the end. So, But you still have the frames if you want to bring it into Premiere or something like that. All right, we hope this uh, tutorial has been helpful. I'm going to upload all the code you need to make this happen. Just go through this tutorial and um, and you should be in good shape. Thanks.